said I wouldn't cry. <laughs> um, uh, among others, deepest gratitude to my husband, Lee, daughter, Jamie, and my family, to Dr. Paul and Ellen Conant, to Greenpeace, and all the citizens back home. I'm excited about this award because I believe it vindicates the efforts of grassroots activists around the world. It gives us more credibility and visibility. To the Goldman family, my most heartfelt thanks. One of the things that I've learned throughout my experience is that we're losing our democracy. Some elected officials have tried to help us, but the forces arraigned against us have been stronger than we or they imagined. Government agencies set up to protect public health only do their job if it doesn't conflict with corporate interests. Big money simply gets what it wants. When President Clinton and Vice President Gore came to the Ohio Valley, they called the sighting of WTI an unbelievable idea. They even said they'd stop it, but then they didn't. What's been revealed here is that there are forces running this country that are far more powerful than the president. With WTI, we have this peculiar situation where President Clinton dare not come to East Liverpool, Ohio. It may be the only place where he can't visit because he cannot witness firsthand the injustice which he has allowed in the interest of a multinational corporation, Von Roll of Switzerland, and the Union Bank of Switzerland, and Jackson Stevens, an Arkansas investment banker. We know if the president came to see it for himself that he would not be able to say that it's okay. We know he'd never have allowed his own daughter to go to school in the shadow of WTI, and that's precisely why he dare not come to East Liverpool. He knows it's wrong. The decision to build the incinerator there was political, and the decision to allow it to operate, despite the stupidity of its location, is political. He can't shove off the responsibility to bureaucracy. There's no power without responsibility. No child should have to go to school 1,100 feet from a toxic waste incinerator, and no president should allow it. Another thing I've learned is that there are experts who work in the corporate interest and experts and non-experts who work in the public interest. I distrust professional experts, not because they're not clever, but because they do not ask the right question. Einstein said, a clever person solves a problem, a wise person avoids it. The difference between being clever and wise is the difference between working at the front end of the problem or working at the back end. Governments that represent the best interests of its people must not be seduced by corporations that work at the back end with chemicals, pesticides, incinerators. As Dr. Conant says, we're living on this planet as if we had another one to go to. We must change the corporate value system that's threatening our very existence. Because we're threatened, grassroots people learn quickly that we have to shift to front-end solutions if we're to save our communities and our planet. We've become the real experts, not because of the school we attended, but because we approach the problem with common sense and with passion. We know what's at stake. We've been forced to educate ourselves, and the final exam represents our children's future. We know we have to ace the test, because when it comes to our children, we can't afford to fail. In order to survive, we have to be wise, not just clever. Thank you. Thank you.